So welcome, welcome, welcome to today's edition. Um, this class is following a really interesting celestial event. So if you're not watching it at this time, um, it was designed partially because we just went through an amazing solar eclipse and um, this solar eclipse, this kind of solar eclipse will not be around for another 20 years. Um, it was quite a celestial event. And there's a lot of um, lore um, around the energy that accompanies a solar eclipse. And energetically, a solar eclipse can be a real shift or a shakeup. Um, in yoga, we don't energetically shift or shake things up in this very kind of aggressive, violent fashion. It's definitely done a little more subtly. But in terms of subtle energies, um, there is a belief that maybe um, whatever was painting you is not painting you today. And that's kind of interesting because it's evidenced by one of my um, students who just mentioned she was feeling great today. So maybe that has to do with the solar eclipse energy. It also um, is like any of these celestial events, a great time to um, shed things that aren't serving you and um, shift into things that serve you better. So you can think of it that way. But we will start um, with a, um, a standing heart math practice. You don't have to stand to do it. I just thought we would start standing because we're um, we're gonna move our way from standing to seated to moving onto the floor. So if you don't mind, um, you could take one or two hands and place them on your heart. And you don't have to do this. It's just a tactile way of knowing where you're directing your attention and your breath. And your eyes can be either opened or closed, um, depending on how safe you feel standing with closed eyes. And the step one is really just to slow your breathing down to a comfortable pace. Keep that pace nice and even between the in-breath and the out-breath. Direct that breath to the chest or heart center. If you're used to being a belly breather, it's a little bit of a shift. That's why the hands here can be helpful. You should feel your chest kind of rising and falling gently. You might already note some subtle shifts in the way you feel, maybe a little calmer just from doing this simple breath practice. And the next step is to activate something called inner ease. So there's a lot of different ways you could approach this some people just say inner ease over and over again, like a mantra. Some people visualize a time and a place when they really felt at ease. And if you're doing it that way, get your senses involved. What did inner ease look like? What sounds were around inner ease? Maybe there's a taste associated and a smell associated with what ease feels like. Try to 
paint as detailed a picture as possible because that involves your senses and gets it out of just being a mental activity. And then other people just imagine a person where they feel really easeful with or a pet. So spend a little time with this painting of a picture of ease and then breathe that feeling or sensation in and out of your chest area, out of your heart center. Inner ease. So whenever you're ready, you can go ahead and release this particular breath practice and go to a normal breath, whatever that is for you. And interlace the arms, the hands behind the head and just tilts a little bit side to side, making kind of a little moon shape. The new moon always accompanies a solar eclipse. The new moon is on in front of the sun. It's between the earth and the sun, which is why it blocks out the light of the sun for that time being. And I was wearing these cool x-ray glasses <laughs> that they sold at the grocery store, and it was pretty spectacular. So go ahead and maybe drop a hand down the leg and allow the elbow to go up to the sky a little deeper. Opening up our side bodies. So whenever I offer you a next level to go into, you always have the choice to stay at the level you're at if that is sufficient and feels good in your body. So if you wanted to go to the next level, you could widen your hands, uh, widen your feet a little bit, and then maybe even take an arm a little bit more across the body. And we don't have to just do this in one fashion. We could maybe then take the arm here. And then maybe scoop it and take it there. And then maybe even circle the arm. So you're getting a side bend and a little bit of upper body movement in a really nice, easeful way. You can see we're making sort of shapes that might be celestial. <laughs> And if you want to go to the next step, and again, any one of these are optional, you can always stop at the step before. This one, you hook your hands together and create maybe even a large circle. You don't have to bend all the way down. And if you don't feel like bending your back, you could bend your knees and keep your back upright. Or some of you might like the inversion where you go all the way down. And feel into the body and we're orbiting. <laughs> we're either the moon orbiting the earth, the earth orbiting the sun, go the other way, the sun orbit orbiting the Milky Way galaxy, the galaxy orbiting within other galaxies in the universe. So it's just... All right, and now just draw an arrow back and release the arrow and go to the other side and draw an arrow back and release the arrow. We're moving energy in many different ways. And last time. And then come to some sort of stillness. 
Eyes can be either open or closed, but check in. Check in with how you've been moving some energy around a little bit, trying to get some sluggishness out of our systems. And how are you feeling? So draw your hands onto your back body. The elbows could be pointing back and supporting the back body. Lift the front body up a little bit. Lift it, lift it, lift it. Feel the lengthening of the front body and the engagement of the back body. And then slide your hands slightly down your thighs, bend the knees, and these are standing cat cows. So get just a little bit of movement in your spine. Everybody's spine will move slightly differently depending on the comfort level of doing this. Now from here, if you don't like to go all the way down to the ground, you're either gonna place your hands on a chair or on the wall, or if you just choose, you'll go all the way to the ground. So you could just come this far and lengthen the spine. You could do this against a wall, or you could go completely with hands on the ground into a downward facing dog. Whichever one you choose to do, walk back or walk your feet closer to your hands, come on up and lift up your body and maybe walk around the room just a little bit. Now in the walk, try to do, let's do a, a moonwalk. <laughs> moonwalk, I don't know if this is a moonwalk. We can be, it's not, I think the moonwalk is like this, right? You go back, whatever walk you wanna do. Just have fun with it. Just see how your body's moving. Okay, let's move into a balance, some sort of balance. So in balancing, one of the things that's important to do is to do a balance that's practical. So if you think about it, most of the time we lose our balance when we're carrying things in our arms or we're stepping off a curb. In my case, my toe stubbed into something and I went forward. So there's lots of things that can affect our balance. So as much as possible, we should simulate those things in a safe environment to prepare our body. So I'm going to do a fun, gentle somatic yoga balance called wiping sand off of feet. So I want you to visualize you're coming off of a beach, getting into a car, and you're carrying a lot of things from the beach, and you've got sand on your feet, and you don't want to drag that into the car. So we're going to use the bottom of one foot to clean the front of the um, half as well as the top of the other foot. So you're cleaning the sand off. So now you've placed a towel down. So you can put your foot on that towel so you're not getting sand again. So now we need to clean the back of that calf. So now you're gonna take the front of the foot and you're gonna wipe it down all the different spots of the back of the calf getting the sand off of there. Now you still have your packages in your arms. Okay, put your foot back down. You might wanna redistribute the weight again. So we've gotten the front. So in the other part, we have to get the inside of this foot. So now we're just gonna slide one inside along the other one, and we're cleaning off the inside of the foot. Okay, put that foot back down, redistribute the weight, and we'll do all of this on the other side. So wiping sand off of feet is a great 
functional balance exercise. So first we'll clean the front with the underside of the foot. Get it going. You've got your packages. You're probably conversing with somebody next to you. You're not paying great attention. So you need to, but we're simulating this in a safe environment, right? Put that foot back down, shift your weight back and forth. Let's do the back of the calf with the top of the foot. Make sure you get all the sand off the back of your calf. You have to move it in different places, get around and put that foot back down and shift the weight again. And then we'll get the inside of the foot by just sliding the one foot <laughs> back and forth. And again, you might be tipping a little bit. Whoa. <laughs> Hopefully you have your car door you can lean on if you need it. And then let's go ahead and redistribute our weight again. And now your feet are clean and we've done our balance. All right, so we'll move our way now down to um, a seat. Um, you can do these seated postures all the way on the ground or you can do them on the chair. You decide what's better for you today. I think, I think I'll just go on the ground. Okay, so sometimes sitting on the ground does require an elevation of your hips. So if you need your hips elevated, go ahead and do that. So if you're in the chair, obviously your feet are on the ground. If you're seated on the floor, um, you can um, either do this deer pose. One knee is bent forward, one knee is bent back. Or if this is uncomfortable, you could have a cross-legged position. You decide. So we're going to do our twisting series. And um, let's go to one direction at a time. So if you're seated on the floor, you're going to go toward the front knee. In my case, that's my right side. So I'm going to twist. First time, keeping my eyes open, looking behind me. And then when you come back in, I want you to just release muscular effort. Just slump over. Soften. Notice where you're softening. Re-engage all the muscles, lifting up. Feel the muscular engagement. Twisting off, twisting off, twisting off. And now if you can close your eyes and release it. The eye closing is more about internally sensing and really noticing where you're working. So pay attention to where you feel this movement. And if you wanna work a different area, direct your attention to it. So right now I'm feeling it primarily around my waist let's say I wanted to work higher up. So now I'm purposely directing attention toward the shoulders. And interestingly enough, I also feel that in the front of the hip of the back leg. One more time with eyes closed. It's like a wind up toy. You're winding it up and then it's unwinding. So now open up the eyes and look behind you and hopefully you have released some chronic tension. So whatever position you're in, go ahead and do something that feels neutralizing. Might be just shifting in your seat. If you're on the ground, you could even lean back and shift the legs. Even if you're seated, seated in a chair, you can windshield wipe with the way legs a little bit. All right, let's set up for the other side. Seeing how our twist is working toward the other side. Go ahead and do your first twist with the eyes open, checking in on your starting point, your initial range of motion. Now for the next set, keep the eyes closed and really focus 
on internally sensing engagement and disengagement and engagement and disengagement and third time maybe engage muscles in a slightly different area now sense a different spot on your body that you want to connect the brain to the muscles so this is what we're doing we're actually creating new neural pathways especially if you've injured an area you have to create the new connections all right let's go ahead and open our eyes and look back one time and see if we have successfully released some chronic tension i feel like i have and release the leg again place the legs in front of you and shift around you might even paddle or pedal your feet and for a moment wherever you're seated go ahead and let's give our feet just a little bit of attention a lot of our energetic channels start, well, they all either start, <laughs> well, not all of them, most of them start or end in the feet. There are some that don't make it all the way down the body. There are some upper body channels. Go ahead and focus on these lower body energetic channels. <clears throat> and when you're done doing one foot, go ahead and give your other foot a little attention. If you have any tender spots, you can focus there. Tender spots are usually related also to some particular organ systems. And I have a, a cool reflexology chart that every once in a while I look at. All right. So let's move into our mudra practice. So you can sit wherever you're comfortable for the mudra practice. Okay, I think we'll do something about protection from our own limiting beliefs. You know, oftentimes it's our own limiting beliefs that keep us stuck. And, um, you know, we believe a certain thing and it could be based on something historically that you learned but may not be true anymore. So this is the Gupta Mudra. So that's the one we'll do. Okay, so in Gupta, you interlace the fingers loosely with the right thumb on top. So all the fingers are interlaced and the right thumb is on top. And then you make sure if you can, the base of your palm is also touching. Relax your shoulders back and down. You, if you're, you can either hold the elbows a little bit away from the body, but if that gets too tiring, tuck them in. I find that I can't hold it like out here the whole time that I have to really lean them against my body. There is like a reason if you can bring them away from your body so that the energy flows from out of your armpits as well. Okay. Ah, if you feel comfortable to do so, go ahead and close your eyes. So Gupta means secret or hidden. And the Gupta Mudra cultivates a sense of entering an inner sanctuary of safety and security. Within the safety of this sanctuary, 
we're able to explore, integrate, and eventually release our identification with the limiting beliefs that keeps us from recognizing our true being. The gesture instills a sense of grounding that supports us in maintaining our equanimity as we explore any limiting beliefs. It creates a space in which transformation can occur more easily. The Gupta Mudra further enhances this sense of an inner sanctuary by cultivating silence and inner peace that allows us to align with our authentic being. The Gupta Mudra directs your breath, your awareness and energy to the base of the body, the pelvis and the solar plexus. So it expands abdominal breathing, which creates a massaging effect supporting digestion and elimination. The, guest, the gesture also relaxes the musculature of the entire body, especially your shoulders and neck and face and head. And the relaxation allows the jaw to soften. Gupta Mudra integrates the left and the right, the solar and the lunar polarities of our being, instilling a sense of balance that allows us to rest more easily in our inner sanctuary. Sanctuary of inner safety. As you hold the Gupta Mudra, take several natural breaths, tuning in to any feeling or sensation awakened by the gesture. Notice how your breath is gently directed into your abdomen, this cultivating a sense of warmth and ease. Take several breaths to rest within this inner sanctuary, deepening your connection with your inner being, which is inherently whole and complete To rest even more deeply within the inner sanctuary, it's important to release any limiting beliefs that are causing disharmony in the world around you and within your own being. Begin by exploring your beliefs related to success and achievement. Striving for fulfillment is normal. But when it becomes an end in itself, rather than a means to unfolding all of your unique talents and possibilities, you might sacrifice your inner peace, making it difficult to rest within this inner sanctuary. Take several breaths to abide in the wholeness of your authentic being, recognizing that nothing Nothing in the world outside can add or subtract from that which is already inherently complete. Next, explore any limiting beliefs about how the world or other people should be. Having expectations is normal and healthy, but when they become rigid and demanding, you create conflict and disharmony that keeps you from experiencing the peace of your inner sanctuary. Take some time to recognize clearly that change always begins within your own being rather than demanding that others change. As you focus on your own awakening, you naturally allow others to find their own time and space for transformation. Finally, explore your sense of individuality, which is an essential facet of your being. However, when your sense of I and me becomes all encompassing, you create separation from others. It fosters isolation and disharmony that make it difficult to rest within your inner sanctuary. Take several breaths 
to sense your essential oneness with all beings, allowing you to live and work in cooperation and harmony, naturally supporting your sense of protection and safety. With the gradual release of your limiting beliefs, take several breaths to sense yourself fully aligned within, within your authentic being, completely secure within the sanctuary of inner safety. Abiding in the complete inner peace, repeat the following three times, aloud or silently, resting, Within my inner sanctuary, I experience absolute protection and safety. Resting within my inner sanctuary, I experience absolute protection and safety. Resting within my inner sanctuary, I experience absolute protection, and safety. Very slowly release a gesture. Take several normal, natural breaths, resting in the sanctuary of your authentic being, and then gently blinking open your eyes, returning slowly and gently, sensing the absolute protection of your inner sanctuary. All right, so if you um, can be on hands and knees, we're going to go on to hands and knees next. If you don't do things on hands and knees, you could do these still in a seated position and just make some adjustments before we end up um, for a minute or two on our belly. And then we're going to be on our side and then on our backs, okay? Um, you might want to spread a blanket out if you are on the floor for comfort on all of these positions and ease of movement. Okay, so in this position, I'd like for you just to slide back and forth. And again, if you are seated, you might be um, reaching your arms a little bit forward and sliding the hips forward and back. This is lengthening the spine. The other possibility for this is to lean against a wall and just shift your hips forward and toward the wall and away from the wall. So now, wherever you are, I want you to focus on the upper body. So drawing the shoulders up toward the ears, releasing the shoulders down the back, and maybe squeezing as if you have a pencil between the shoulder blades. So shoulders up toward the ears. And then shoulders down the back, squeezing as if there's a pencil. Shoulders up toward the ears and down the back. Now, now work a little bit lower. So wherever you are doing this from, feel the effort behind the bra line if you're a woman or just at the base of the rib cage. So, so I'm jutting the the ribs toward the front, come through neutral, and then drawing up around the rib cage and back through neutral. So feel this effort a little lower down than the last one. Now let's go a little further down. So this is really, for most people, the pivot point where they actually do this cat-cow or rocking action. So if you already have a tendency to overdo this, be careful that you don't. So 
the belly drops a little bit. There's a little bit of a rounding down coming through neutral. And then right here, there's a rounding the other way and the belly pulls in through neutral. Now on this one, if you want to add the head, so when the belly drops down or goes forward, draw the chin to the chest. Come through neutral. When the belly draws in and there's a rounding of the back, lift the chin up and come through neutral. Drop chin, drop belly, or go forward. Neutral, draw belly in, lift head, and neutral. So now I want you to tense up every muscle in your body just briefly. Feel everything engage. Now, if you're on hands and knees, you're pushing back slowly to either a puppy pose or child's pose. If you're seated, you could be rounding forward, releasing one muscle at a time. So start by releasing maybe the lower body first. So you're softening, soften, and then slightly higher. The slower you go, the more effective this is, very slowly. So those of you on hands and knees are either gonna end up softening down into either a puppy pose with the butt up in the air or a child's pose. If you're in a chair, you're going into some sort of forward fold where you're softening. Now you will notice for me, I have a terrible time softening my feet so if you need some extra cushioning under ankles or between thighs and calves, a rolled blanket or a bolster could be really helpful. So wherever you have landed, go ahead and just breathe here for a moment or two. Once again, those of you with osteoporosis, your butt is not going to be down. It's going to be up in the air but you're softening all the other muscles that you can. Breathing. And those of you all the way back, just let it go. All right. Let's make our way onto our sides. If you um, need extra cushioning under the head, a second roll blanket, would be effective or a flatter kind of um, pillow or um, cushion might work. I just wouldn't do anything. It all depends on, let me just show you this for a minute. So here's what is not really comfortable for a lot of people. You see how my head is leaning way, way over like that. That's not good for the neck. So you wanna be able to do something that keeps your head kind of like that. And um, so find a way to keep your head just a little supported on your side, okay? So just laying on the side and we're going to um, open into a twist. Stack arms on top of each other straight out from the body. And we're gonna ease into this twist. We're not gonna go directly. Remember how we pulled the arrow back when we were standing? So draw this arrow back. And then let it go back forward again. Do that two more times. Draw the arrow back. And let it go. And again, if the pillow is not working in this, you could just do a extra blanket. Draw the arrow back, maybe a little further, and let it go. Now, next round, I want you to lift arm up to the sky and open, and then release it. And lift the arm slowly up to the sky, follow with your eyes, and release. And then maybe you go a little further each time. 
but only go to what feels right for you. Now, if you want to go into the full twist here, at this point, you might have to remove what's under your head. Sometimes what I do is I place whatever it is behind my back so that I can open up and be supported. The other possibility for this twist is to place the thing between your knees and open up into the twist. And we'll hold this twist for maybe four to five breaths. Be aware of how your neck feels. Make sure your hips are pretty stacked so that they're, you're not feeling this twist in your SI joint at the base of your back spine, that you're feeling it primarily waist up through the head and breathing. All right, come back over and release this. Come on to the backs gently and maybe windshield wiper a few times, slowly. And anything else you want to do to neutralize? Some people like complete stillness in between the asanas. And we're going to go ahead and repeat this whole thing to the other side. So making sure your head is supported. Stacking the arms on top of each other. Legs are stacked with the knees bent. First, you're drawing an arrow back, opening, and then releasing the, the arrow. And then do, do this two more times. Open. And release. And third time. Open and release. Now we'll draw the arm directly up to the sky. Eyes follow the hand and come back. Directly up into the sky, opening further and back. And maybe if you do the full version, you need this thing out from under your head. I'm kind of rolling the blanket up a little bit. And then I'm going fully over. You could bend the elbow. You could rest the hand on your side body. You could take this cushion, put it behind your back to give your shoulders something to rest on. Or even place it between the knees and go into the twist and hold this twist for five breaths. Hopefully feeling this from waist up, not any discomfort in your SI joint. And breathe. releasing the cushion if it's anywhere blocking you, getting it out of the way, coming onto your back body and doing something that feels neutralizing. Maybe it is windshield wipers. Maybe legs are going up in the air, either straight or with knees bent. It might be happy baby. So feel into some neutralizing 
rewarding posture because really what you're doing is you're actually rewarding your nervous system, your brain, and the connections your sensory motor cortex has to your muscles by saying, you did good, and now you get to just enjoy the fruits of your labor. This is helping these things become more pleasurable. We don't like doing things that are not pleasurable, right? Go ahead and place feet on the ground, knees are bent, and start to rock forward and back. We're back to doing cat cows, pelvic tilts, or red light, green light, whichever one you want to call it. Slowly rocking the hips forward, creating space under the low spine. Then rocking the hips back, shortening the distance between hips and rib cage. Adding in the upper body if you want to by interlacing hands behind the head. When you rock the hips forward, have the backs of the arms go deeper into the ground and take the chin up to the sky. When you rock your hips back toward the rib cage, tuck chin in, draw elbows toward each other. Come through neutral each time. Feel the upper and lower bodies working. Coordinate with breath. And now widen the arms if you've created enough space for yourself. Allow the feet to draw together, the knees to drop out. When you let everything fall out, Draw the chin up to the sky. And then when the knees come together, draw the arms toward each other, wrap them around each other. Draw the chin in. Let's open like a flower. And then close the flower. Change the cross of the arm each time. Open like a flower. And close the flower. And open. And close. If you're able to, stretch completely out. If you need something under the knees, go ahead and place it under the knees. And just shift one hip at a time. So you're drawing one leg as if somebody is pulling on the leg, making you longer, and that's drawing the hip down. And then release so the hips are back to being even and neutral. And then shift the other foot away from you, lengthening that side of the body, and then releasing back to neutral. These are hip hikes. One hip goes down, one hikes towards your shoulder, they're not hiking off the ground. They're hiking by sliding up and down on the ground. So interlace the hands behind the head again. The next time the right hip hikes down, draw the left elbow above the head, not in the sky, but on the ground. Take the right elbow and go toward that elongated right leg. Slide back to neutral. Next time the left hip shifts away, the foot is pulling down. Draw that elbow closer to that side, the left side. The right elbow is above the head, but on the ground. Come back. Do that one more time. Lengthening and back and lengthening and back. Now cross the right ankle over the left. Allow the left leg to go a little bit to the left. Interlace those hands again behind the head. Now you're shortening one side and lengthening the other. So my elbow is reaching down. You could even stretch your arm down. You're making a crescent moon like we did standing, laying on the ground. 
untangle the legs, come back to the center, and let's now cross the left leg over the right, shift your legs slightly to the right, interlace hands behind head, tuck the right elbow down toward the legs. So you've created a banana shape or a moon shape. The right elbow is closer toward the legs, the left one is pointed up above the sky. You could release the right hand and draw that right hand even further down your body. So you have a long side and a short side. And go ahead and release that. Let everything go. Maybe windshield wipers again or rocking of the pelvis. Explore different arm movements. You might want to do an inversion here of some sort. Hmm. And then find your way into your most comfortable rest today. So this reading from Barbara Brock has just been speaking to me a lot lately <laughs> because we all face daily issues, obstacles. We could even be calling them problems. <laughs> And um, if we're going to shift and um, release and find some inner ease, then part of that process is stop calling them problems. <laughs> so this one is called Not a Problem. And this comes from her book, Trusting the Gold, Tara Brock. Joseph Goldstein was my first Vipassana meditation teacher. And one of the things he said still regularly comes into my awareness. Every time I think there is a problem, he said, I decide there isn't one. I have found that simple guideline to be helpful in so many situations. When we label some situation as a problem, we easily get caught inside our small self. The mind tightens. We see things from only one perspective. But when we let go of that negative frame, we can begin to unwind our stories and conclusions and start seeing a situation with a fresh perspective. Some years ago, my siblings and I were in a kind of dicey place with some disagreements about financial workings around a property we inherited. We were all entrenched in our own individual views, each of us thinking, oh, this is a big problem. During this time, I had the opportunity to go on a retreat outside the heat of the family conflict and in the quiet of the meditation hall, I, find, I found myself remembering Joseph's words, thinking about the challenges my siblings and I were entangled in. I told myself, I am going to decide that this is not a problem anymore. Every time the situation would come up in my mind, I would say, not a problem. It is unresolved. It is difficult, it is sticky, but it's not a problem. It was amazing. Just deciding that what we were facing wasn't a problem created a little more space in my way of thinking about it and a little less fixation on what seemed to be an intractable issue. After the retreat, when I returned to negotiations with my family, 
the greater ease and openness in my mind made a helpful difference. Removing the frame of problem from the challenges that arise is not a delusional practice in which we diminish the experience of real suffering, see harm and turn away, or deny that situations can be hard to solve. Rather, it makes room for us to recognize more clearly what's happening without assuming life should be different and calling a situation bad or wrong. We can then see things just as they are with all their painful twists and tangles and also their potential for creative responses and deep awakening. So in the last minute, while you're lying down, I'm gonna play you a song that I've been learning and you are going to reflect on any current situation in some area of your life that maybe you can let go of labeling as a problem. So I'm gonna switch the mic so you can hear this song I practice. And the song is called Wakening to Truth. So I've been practicing it. Maybe each time it'll get a little better. So this signals the end of our time together. Make your way to seated. Gather any parts of today's practice that were helpful. Draw hands to the heart. Wishing you ease and continued gentle transformation after this big transformative solar event. Namaste.